Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Paul Apollonia. I'm going to show you what I sold for last week on eBay from uh, December 7th to December 13th, 2020. Again, let me introduce myself. I'm Paul Apollonia. Before I forget, please, if you like the video, smash your like button, subscribe to my channel. Thank you to each and every one of you. I know it's not many subscribers, but 512, I'm very excited. I hope you're enjoying the content I'm putting out there on YouTube for you. Mainly, it's going to be eBay content and some being frugal content and how I get free stuff and etc. And consignment and anything to do with online selling, what I'm doing, I try and pass it on to you guys. So uh, last week was pretty good. Christmas, uh, the holiday season has been pretty good for eBay. eBay is my main venue right now. Um, I do dab a little bit in Amazon, not that much, but uh, trying to throw some books up there, uh, Merchant Fulfilled, which means um, I don't send them into Amazon. I keep them here at my house, and as I sell them, I ship them out. Um, I'm going to show you uh, what I selection of what I sold, and I'm going to uh, tell you where I got it from and hopefully tell you what I made off of each item. Um, my main uh, source of uh, sourcing, I guess, is through consignment. Consignment is not for everyone. I keep on saying that over and over again. I just want to make sure I make that clear. It can be a hassle like anything else, like thrifting and garage selling. I like consignment because I'm not out there thrifting and garage selling. I don't mind thrifting and garage selling. It's just not my thing. Consignment is kind of cool. I get a call from somebody. I go to their house. I pick up a bunch of stuff. I guess it's kind of the same thing. And I bring it home and I go through it and stuff like that. Uh, I do a 50-50 split up to the first $100, and my percentage goes down after the value goes up. Uh, just make sure you're getting good clients that understand that their uh, items are going to sell at market value. Um, this tape measure that maybe your grandfather may have used for 20 years, unless it's something special and antique-ish and well sought after, this probably just going to sell what a tape measure is going to sell. Whatever noise you hear in the background is from my crazy dogs walking around. All right, let's get this show on the road. Like I said, subscribe to my channel if you like. Really appreciate that. And we're gonna—we got a lot of items here. I'm gonna try and go through them as fast as I can. I know sometimes I get a little long-winded with these things, and you're going to see items priced all over the place. I saw anything and everything. If I can—if it's a quick list, a quick um, ship. Uh, I will uh, list it and sell it. Like, for example, this It's a Wonderful Life DVD. Uh, real quick story. I got a bunch of these from a consignment client probably a couple of years ago, and actually I never did anything with with them. And they said, don't worry about this stuff after about a year. They said, you just keep it, and we're moving on. Actually, they moved away. Great. So I went to list them on uh, – I was going to give them to a uh, an app called Declutter. I have to look that up. It's spelled weirdly. Uh, they wanted to give me 20 cents or something like that. And then I went on eBay and looked up some DVDs that I had. And I noticed Declutter was selling them on eBay for about what what this price is. And I thought, eh, what the heck, let me sell them. Uh, this is what I call a, um, a low-end sale, obviously, almost a loss leader. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. Last year, I sold a ton of DVDs around the holidays. I really think it helped my holiday sales by bringing traffic into my store. And if you don't have a store, it brings traffic into your account. So I list them just via the mobile app, which is quick, simple, uh, not real clean. Uh, you, it's got some limitations, but I was able to list them. I prefer listing them on my uh, Chromebook, my desktop, because I can do more to the listing on my on my uh, desktop. I throw them in a poly envelope, one of these eBay, oops, one of these eBay envelopes, or one of these um, things. I was able to get these envelopes pretty darn cheap. So I'm not making a lot of money off of this. Uh, probably made about three bucks off of this, if that. Um, I'm okay with that. It it doesn't bother me. I know a lot of people are like, "Ooh, I wouldn't sell something that cheap." Whatever, we all run our businesses differently. I know people don't sell anything less than fifty dollars profit, twenty five dollars profit, whatever. Uh, my um, my survival sometimes is on my low end sales. Let me lo make that small. I don't you see my ugly mug that big? Uh, let's go to the next item. Uh, Christmas stuff, although it is Christmas time, Christmas stuff does sell all year round. Many sellers only list stuff around the holidays. Um, I tend to keep stuff listed out there all year round. Doesn't cost that much to keep it listed, whether you have it in a store or uh, out on your own without a store. Uh, this was an old consignment client. Uh, I actually found two boxes of hers. 
and she said, don't worry about it. Um, well, after we, we ended the, the, the agreement, because she said before, don't worry about my stuff. And I found it again, and I just wanted to verify it with her. But um, I'll probably give her something for these, because I know her. She's a good friend of mine. Uh, so if I were to do consignment on this, I'd get half of that twenty five ninety nine, and then the uh, the fee is on the uh, consigners side. But I made pretty good money on this. It sold pretty quick, sold within a couple days. We are reaching September 14th, one more day before uh, you can get things to somebody by uh, Christmas time through priority mail, they're saying. But this did go out priority mail. And when I do consignment, I always charge for shipping. Because if I do free shipping, it messes up my whole matrix, my whole spreadsheet if I do free shipping. All my photos are done on my phone. And these, uh, this background is nothing fancy. It's from Dollar Tree to poster boards that are in my garage with a light above them. And I have another little Dollar Tree desk lamp. It's an LED light that I shine in front of it. So I say it's a pretty good picture for, uh, for what it is. Try and use item specifics if you can. Well, really, it's almost a must. Must. Because uh, eBay and Google love item specifics. That is what people searched on. Uh, prior to you listing your items, so it's very important for you to use them. I'll go more for I'll go further into some of my listings as we go along to speed this up for you guys. I got a lot of items here. I want to show you old games do sell. Uh, these games, I'll be honest with you, I got these probably. Oh my gosh, eight years ago <laughs> on Craigslist for free, and I listed them on uh, Amazon for a while. They didn't sell. I know they go for a lot more on Amazon. They didn't sell. I listed on eBay. They didn't sell. I took them down. And to be quite honest with you, I forgot about them. I'm an open book. I forget about things sometimes in my inventory. And I found them again a couple weeks ago. And I listed them. And I think this is the second one I sold. So not a big dollar sale. $9.99 plus shipping. But it's cool with me. I probably made about $7.50 on this after fees. Uh, my shipping, I do, uh, I do a flat rate. And I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at guessing what it might cost. Sometimes I make money. Sometimes I lose money. When I make money on shipping, I do not refund the buyer. They see what they're paying for shipping. Sometimes I make a little. Sometimes I make a lot. Sometimes I lose a little. Sometimes I lose a lot. I probably should do calculated shipping, but this has been working out for me. I'm happy. I choose economy shipping because that gives me every option that eBay offers. Post Office, FedEx, and now UPS, and all the different flavors of each of those shipping options. If I were to pick priority, I really would have to ship it out priority. So whatever you pick as your shipping option, you really need to ship it out that mode of shipping, because sometimes eBay will not back you up if you're shipping it somewhere else. I will be quite honest with you, a couple weeks ago, I did by accident have something priority, and it was a heavy thing. And it would have cost me a fortune. So I took a gamble and I shipped it out FedEx. They got it. They're happy. And that's good. Just just make sure sometimes um, if you're going to pick a shipper, make sure you stick with that one shipper. Uh, some people only pick things if they're coming post office or only pick things FedEx due to their location. Or maybe they hate one of them and they're looking for the one they like. Yes, it's kind of interesting. Uh, this is a consignment item. This is one of the many consignment items. A wonderful client I picked up a couple weeks ago. Actually, make friends with, uh, if you're into consignment, even if you're not into consignment, make friends with uh, organizers in your area. Uh, I'd say take them out for coffee, but we're really not doing too much of that right now. Whatever, um, realtors, et cetera, whatever, they are, they, they have clients that have a plethora worth of stuff, and either you can go to their house and just buy it, or you can maybe do a consignment gig with them. It's up to you. Um, this is probably the fourth or fifth electronic item I've sold for this uh, client. Uh, this woman called me through a organizer that uh, actually found me online through Facebook, which unfortunately my Facebook account got hacked a month ago, and I'm trying desperately to get it back because I've lost a lot of business due to that being hacked. Um, and she contacted me through Facebook, and then she said, I got this client. I can't recommend it from somebody else. Um, and she said, uh, can you come out to the house and look at everything? And it seems like she has her parents' house who have since passed away. And she has a whole house full of stuff and she just wants to get rid of it. Uh, no real rush, which is great. Because a lot of times you go into a, a consignment deal 
and somebody goes, oh, I got to move in three weeks or I got to move in a month. And that's a huge issue. That puts a lot of pressure on me. And I really don't like a lot of pressure on me at this stage of my life if I can help it. Uh, back 10, 15 years ago, I didn't mind it. But anymore today, I, I really don't want to have that kind of pressure. And this woman said, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm not in any big rush. She did mention last time I saw her last week that she really would like to have everything done in a couple of months. I said, we could probably get that done. If worse comes or worse, I'll, I'll, I'll take what I can sell and then she can get rid of the rest. I'll figure a place to put it. <laughs> Back to this item. I'm sorry. I got a little long winded there. Selling it as parts not working because it did not work. I saw tons of stuff as parts not working, even if it is working old vintage electronics. It's sort of a way out, although people can still return things if you're selling it parts not working. Even if you say no returns, eBay has a two week return period that overrides that. So beware of that. I'm very clear in my description, in my condition description here. We'll scroll down here. You can see the whole thing. Actually, my condition description is the exact same thing as my description. I copy and paste it. Not working, selling it as is, as is for parts or not working and blah, 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 blah. The guy bought it within an hour. It's funny. I've been selling on eBay for 20 years and it, it, it's, it's, it's a shame how sellers don't know how to pack stuff. Every time I sell something that is rare or vintage, I get at least one message begging me to ship it properly, pack it properly. And I just show them my feedbacks and they say, okay, that's great. You got it figured out. What, how do I ship this? I use a heavy duty Lowe's or Lowe's or Home Depot box, medium size. And I have some uh, clean mattress foam from a, a sleep number bed that I sold through consignment. We sold, uh, the guy wanted me to sell the bed and everything. I thought, I'm not selling the bed. I did sell the bellows inside the bed, the big air things to fill up with the remotes. 100 bucks a piece on those, and I sold the remotes for $75 a piece, and the pump went for $149 a piece, and I got half of all that. So that was a good deal, and I said, I'm not selling the mattress, so I took the foam out of the mattress, and I've been using it for packing. Yes, it is clean foam, no bed bugs, no smells, no nothing. They had no animals, so it's good. So I've been using that, and I'm just about out, but that's what I used to. Big layer on the bottom, put the tape deck, big layer on the top, tucked it around the corners. And the heavy duty box is kind of nice because if it gets jarred or banged, the box isn't really good to get damaged because it's really thick. The box, box cost me $2.65. Another item I got from kind of a consignment thing, kind of a, I don't know what I want to do with my stuff and she just vanished. <laughs> this happens too sometimes. <laughs> Uh, it's a broken Oric vacuum cleaner. I could have fixed it, but I did not want to fix it. I, I didn't want to spend time with it. It's not a real big money thing. If I were to fix it, I would have gotten maybe $10 more, but I did have the part. Uh, that part right there that you see right there is the part I taped onto the handle. I did disassemble it, disassemble it, dismantle it. <laughs> as it says in the description, as you notice, I found as many item specifics as I could. I did my research. I Googled it. I also used Terapeak, which is free with an eBay store, a basic store or above or above a basic store. You get Terapeak for free, which is a great research tool. Also, WorthPoint is a wonderful tool, too. I know the people at WorthPoint, it's probably better than, uh, oh, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's more geared towards antiques. But I did find um, all the information there. I did state clearly, cord needs repair. And I'll show you the photos. Upper post is broken. New one is taped to the handle. Um, that vacuum seems to work fine. I bought it like this and intended to repair it. Actually, it's kind of a little fib. And handle may be dismantled for uh, shipping. Let me show you the pictures. All these pictures are done on my phone. There's the front. There's always show when you're selling a vacuum cleaner, always show the bag open. Back. There's your... Um, handle extra new handle strapped to it and there's a picture of the uh the um the power cord it is a working unit i did turn it on it does work i find a lot of vacuum cleaners and dumpsters when i'm pulling out the bubble wrap believe it or not they're fine and working uh so if this was consignment i'd want to get half of that um i did do free shipping because that's what everybody was doing that was selling these. Now, if it was a truly consignment client, I would not have done free shipping and it may have taken me a while to sell it. Remember, when you do free shipping, it bumps your searches. 
It bumps your item up in searches on eBay. So it's really important for you to do free shipping. Don't forget to add what you think shipping would be. Either you can guess at it, you can box it up and weigh it and measure it and go out to to the, the many uh, sites out there. There's even one on eBay on calculating your shipping and do it that way. Just make sure you add something in there for shipping when you're doing free shipping. So I didn't make a whole lot on this. I probably made about 30 bucks after shipping. It went somewhere in the Midwest. I had to use two boxes, I telescoped the two boxes together, dismantled the vacuum cleaner the best I could to get into the smallest box I could. And I got videos out there on me telescoping and Frankenstein, Frankenboxing, Frankenboxes. Uh, I don't know what that is doing popping up there. Um, Going fast. Another consignment client that I got. Uh, this is all that I took from her. These, she gave me three of these things. She had a lot of China, like tons of China and specialty China. She thought it was worth a lot. And I met with her. This is, a, this is the, you know, there's pros and there's cons. I guess just like thrifting, you may go thrifting all day and not bring home anything. I met with her for about an hour and a half at a coffee shop. She had elaborate printouts of everything and we looked them up on eBay and most of the china she had she paid a lot of money for was worth not even for me to sell it like i showed you stuff that i saw for a couple bucks i will do that with a consignment client i'll sell something for a couple bucks if there's a lot of other things involved just to keep the sales going with him uh so she gave me a bunch she gave me four of these um nordic wear molds so this is this is the first one i did sell another one just today um, and that's all I got from her. So I get half of that. Not a big deal, not a big money maker, but hey, every penny counts in my books. Um, here's another item that somebody gave me, a consignment client. I was getting some things. I said, here, you want the scoff club? I went, sure. I'm surprised this went for this cheap, but this is what they were going for on eBay. This is basically um, kind of a golfer, not a real big golfer, but I do, go, do, I do go out once a week and play nine holes, not really good at it, but we're working on it. It's kind of a custom club maker. Um, they're really good clubs for an affordable price. I'm surprised that this wasn't going for much more than that, but that's what I got for $27.99 plus free shipping. It went to Maryland, so the shipping wasn't that bad. You may ask, how did I ship this? Well, there's many ways you can ship this. You can make your own box by rolling cardboard around the box, stapling each end or taping each end, or you can use the triangle long tubes that are available at you at not UPS. Uh, the post office online only. They're not available at the post office. And I telescoped two of those together, smooshed them down close to the club and shipped it out like that. Did not make a whole lot of money on this. Like I said, probably made about 15 bucks on this, but I got it for free. And it sold probably in about two or three weeks. Uh, another consignment client I got, oh, make, i tell you, your competitors can be your best source of, uh, getting new clients, a consignment, a consignment guy out in Pittsburgh, Trader Chris, he does high end consignment. He does stuff that I have no desire to do. Super high end jewelry, Rolex watches, etc. That's just his, his niche. It's always important to have niches and have many of them. Um, so I got friendly with him a couple years ago. He's been coming to my uh, eBay meetup group, which we meet every second Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Check it out on Meetup, a Raleigh eBay meetup group. And anybody can come in. It's a $5 charge. Um, it's got about 20 people there, 15, 20 people usually every month. Back to this. <laughs> Need more coffee. Um, so he called me up or he contacted me. He said, I got this guy in Raleigh. He was a water pick salesman, hunter fan salesman 20 years ago. And I really don't want to deal with, with the stuff. It's too low end for me. I said, cool. So um, I called him. Great. I went over, picked up one van load of stuff, picked up another van load of stuff and uh, just go periodically picking up things. He's got a whole garage full and half a basement full of stuff. Not making a whole lot of money off of this, but it's a volume thing. I do sell probably two of these a week. And there are some higher end things. I've sold thermostats, old uh, Hunter fans I've sold that were made in 1993, believe it or not, that were new in the box. Yes, people buy old things like that. Don't discount old stuff like that. So um, that's not bad. I've got to pick up more filters from actually next week or week, probably after Christmas. I'll just wait. A Dollar Tree calendar. I buy these for a dollar plus NC uh, sales tax, dollar seven. 
not a big dollar sale. This is what I call a replenishable. I believe we all need to have replenishables in our store or in our eBay listings. They can be from Dollar Tree. They can be from Lowe's or, or, or Home Depot. They can be anywhere. I How I do replenishables is I go to a store and I make sure it's an item that they have, that they always will have, not an item. Well, I'm going to take this back to calendar. They, they kind of run out of them in June, but that's okay. It's only a temporary replenishable. Uh, like if I were to do something at Lowe's, I'd make sure it was something like maybe nuts or bolts or something like that, something that you know they're always going to have. And I don't want you spending a million dollars on a replenishable. This is what I'm saying. Make sure that they have it all the time so you can just – you get down to a certain level, they call it a par level. You get down to, let's say, I have three calendars left. Ooh, my next run, when I go out, let me stop at Dollar Tree and get more calendars. You would do the same with Lowe's or Home Depot. So replenishables are really important. I'm not making a lot of money on these. All I'm doing is buying them when I'm there at Dollar Tree, buying other things, listing them. I've already got it listed, so I just add to the quantity, and I bump up the listing. I make a change to the listing, so eBay says, ooh. You made a change to listing. Let me bump that up in, in search. And I ship them out in these poly envelopes. Um, I make not a whole lot of money. I make maybe three, maybe $2.99. Uh, if people buy multiples of these, I make more money. But usually they're just buying one at a time. As you see, I've sold 12 already since about November. Not big dollar sales. 12 times three. Hey, I'll take it. It works for me. I know many say it's silly to do it, but it works for me. Uh, old tiles. My father-in-law was a tile bath and kitchen guy. And I went up there last week, two weeks ago. And he had tons of stuff from under his house. Again, I bought, I bought, uh, he gave me some towel racks before I saw those at least one or two or three or four a month, uh, ceramic towel racks, uh, really weird colors from the seventies and eighties. They're probably from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and he had boxes of these tiles. So I thought, okay, I'll take a bunch of them home. Took more than I wanted home. Uh, did sell one so far whoo, for $11.99. I made $8 on this. It went local, and it did go first class. It went very local, actually, um, and it went first class. So, hey, 8 bucks off of a tile, that's fine. I'm thrilled with that. I've got tons of them left, <laughs> as you can see. I've got deals going on there, buy one, buy two, buy three, stuff like that. So there is money in old tiles. They are what they call, um, gosh, not lost. Uh, they are long tail sales, they call that, which means it's going to be in your store or in your eBay listings for a long time before it sells. This is a wonderful item of a, another same person that has the house, that has all the vintage stuff, more electronics going out, sold it as parts, not working, because I don't even know how it works. Now, I did spend about an hour researching this. This is a very, very rare amplifier. There are not too many of them out there. There are uh, TA-112As out there, but not too many TA-120As out there. Not too many TA-120s out there. So I did spend my time researching this. Um, probably about an hour and probably about another half an hour listing it, but I made half of that. So what is that? That's a hundred and some odd dollars I made and it sold within two hours on eBay. And again, this guy messaged me, make sure you pack it right. <laughs> Watch out for the knobs. And I did, I used the same foam, wrapped it really good. Two layers on the bottom, placed this two layers on the top. And I tucked a big piece of foam in the front. And make sure I pushed it to the back with foam in the back, but make sure there's some room so if it moves around. Then I use my box sizer tool I always do, schmooch down, I cut the box to the size, and I make sure it's pressed down on the foam so that item can't move. So they can do whatever they want, and I doubt it's ever going to get damaged. Um, it did go out FedEx, so I got a heck of a deal on shipping. I made a good bit of money on shipping. Um, he should be getting it tomorrow or the next day. And he can't wait to get it. Uh, when you're doing vintage stuff like this, many people are going to ask you to, hey, can you open up the case and show me some pictures of the inside? So I did that. Always take pictures of the back and all the jacks. But there is money in vintage stuff. Just it's up to you how you want to sell it. You want to sell it used for parts. I have learned recently that it is best to not show it powered on. 
Because if you do show it powered on, everybody thinks it works, and that can spike a return. Uh, so I even stayed here. See, it took me a while to get. See, I even added my own item specifics with notes. Sold as is. I have no way to test it properly. Um, I I found all this information out on the web through hi-fi sites and everything. Sold as parts. I have no way to properly test it. Powers on, which it does, but the safety light comes on. I think the safety light's supposed to come on. So this thing may work. I mean, this is if this works, this guy got a heck of a deal because these things go used over four hundred dollars. But I don't have the right equipment to test it. It's old. I really don't want to take a chance on saying yes, it works, and somebody buys it and it doesn't work, and they don't have the ability to fix it. This guy is going to fix it. He already said he's going to tear it apart, and clean it up, replace some capacitors, and etc. Uh, another consignment item, a low-end consignment. This is another friend of mine that's moving. I've known this gentleman for years. Possibly moving, he doesn't know. And he's clearing out some things. Uh, made $7 on that. It's a train transformer. I don't even know if it works or not. I'm selling it as is. Cord's pretty beat up. I even took a picture of the cord to show that the... Why isn't this? To show the cord is torn up right there. So it's not a big dollar sale. Let me go a little faster here. Uh, another item I got from gosh knows where. <laughs> Somebody probably gave it to me. Uh, so made uh, cost me probably about seven fifty to ship that out. So I did pretty good on that. Probably made about nine bucks on that, if not more. Uh, these things used to go for big dollars. Gosh, these department fifty six stuff used to sell for huge money. Then the market dropped. Like a lot of things have trains have dropped, like that transformer used to go for big money. I'm learning things are tanking as I don't know why they're tanking. Um, this item would have gone for a lot of money, but they just don't anymore. This was an older consignment client. I actually paid her off for everything. She was wondering about her stuff about a year ago, and I just said, just let me just give you 100 bucks for everything that, that's left. And that's what I did. That's what I normally do when people are like, well, you know, what's going on with everything? I just pay them off at that point. Um, didn't make a whole lot of money on this. Uh, shipping was about nine ninety five. I forget where it went. So uh, made probably about, let's say, 13 or twelve fifty after 12 bucks after fees and everything. Another house uh, did better on this, but again, I sold this free shipping because everybody seemed to be using free shipping. Did not make a lot of money on this. Probably made about $9 on this. It is amazing that these houses are not going for more than what they are. How do I pack it? I have the original box. I do not ship the original box like this with a label on it. I know some people do. I don't like doing that. People like their original boxes. I've learned that, and I'm like that, too. I don't want to see my original box coming in with a big label on it, and it all banged up. I either find another box to put it in, or I make my own box for it. I cut a box, wrap it around, and then just fold it like a gift and tape the living heck out of it and ship it out like that. Uh, what the heck is this? Oh, this is an item I just sold Saturday consignment item. This sold within one hour. Uh, it's some kind of room temperature sensors. I have no idea. Um, I was going to ship this out first class, but since the person paid so much for it, it is a consignment client for a friend of mine that I've been doing consignment with since, since excuse me, since the beginning, like 2008 when I started doing consignment. He was my first client and said, man, you shouldn't be working a part-time job. You, can make, you could be making more money on eBay. And that's when I started really getting into eBay. So he is a 50-50 split no matter what I saw. If I saw something for $57.99 or I saw something for $600, which I have in the past, it's a 50-50 split. That's the deal with him. He doesn't care. He just wants his stuff gone. So that's all. I was going to send it out first class, but I thought, yeah, let me send it out priority. The guy did pay a lot of money for it. So I think it still only cost me a couple of bucks to ship it out priority. Because it was so light, I found a little box for it and it went out. See, I saw everything and anything, as you can see. Here's more of the water pick guy stuff. This guy bought uh, two items from me, two of these and two of these, and he asked for a combined shipping, uh, which I did. Everything fit. I was hoping everything was going to fit in a box, but this box, and I underestimated the shipping cost on this, and I need to bump this up or just do free shipping and call it $21.99 or something or $22.99. Um, this again, this is from the water pick guy I'm doing consignment with. Uh, combined, I did make some decent money. I think I made about $15 combining everything. 
the shipping, I did refund him a little money since he did ask about combined shipping. I refunded him $7 and I still made a buck or two on shipping because he bought the two items. They went priority. Another uh, water pick uh, thing I bought, these are sealed. Uh, I rarely have a problem with any of the stuff I'm selling, this water pick stuff. One or two did not work, but I think the people did not know how to use the item right. It was a water filter. Another one of these water filters did not work. It went um, to Europe and it wasn't working. So I just refunded them. Not making a lot of money on that consignment deal. Half of that. Uh, ooh, not making hardly any money on this. A CD set. I have no idea even know who it is. A friend of mine was moving. She's always moving around. She always says, here's a couple boxes in the room. If you want to take them. And I did. And I listed stuff like this. I did not make a whole lot of money. On this. I probably made about, oh, a buck 50 on this. Went in one of these. Didn't do any packing, just slipped it in a poly envelope. Uh, dishwasher parts do sell. I am just about done with my dishwasher uh, videos and class, parting out dishwashers and selling the parts on eBay. I'm very excited. Boy, I can't believe how long editing takes. Editing videos takes longer than doing the videos and doing the whole course. Uh, feverishly working on getting that done. Parts do sell. Uh, when I get something from Craigslist, I do a screen print of the uh, screen on my phone. And as long as they don't say it was electronic, electronic, electronic problem, like if they say it leaks or something, then I assume that the um, that the control board works. Now, if for some reason the person gets it and it doesn't work, which this is like a real hassle, I, I really there are ways of testing these things out, but they're a real pain in the neck to test out, and I just would rather do it this way. Um, if for some reason it doesn't work, I just do a total refund immediately. If they say there's a problem with it, I don't even question it. I just give a total refund and call it a learning experience. Um, so I did pretty good on this. If this is working, which I'm pretty sure it is working, I, I think I made $47 on this, which is a good deal. I've made more on these control boards if it's a Bosch control board. But dishwasher parts do sell. Another low-end sale, A Christmas Story. What a great movie. If you haven't seen it, you got to watch it. <laughs> um Probably made a buck fifty on this too. Another low end loss leader sale, a consignment uh, sale from the same person who has the house with stereo equipment that I sold. Uh, we just talked about this item uh, when I met her last Thursday. She was boy, that, gosh, I'm surprised that pencil etching isn't uh, selling. I said, yeah, I know sometimes it's like that, and boom, it sold. How did I pack this? Well, funny you should mention that I got huge boxes. Well, I had to kind of lean in the dumpster to get all the bubble wrap. Huge boxes of bubble wrap. I'm going to put that video up today sometime. Um, there were boxes. I put them into a big box I found in that dumpster of bubble wrap that, that's, that you can cut and everything that, that's perforated, which is great. Uh, so I got that for free, and I put two layers of big, thick bubble wrap, laid the picture, put two more layers into a bigger box in the picture, and that should be you ain't going anywhere. It's Nothing's moving in the box. So it made a little bit of money shipping. I think it was nine ninety five or ten twenty for shipping, and I get half of the uh, the cost there. Here's another consignment item from the same person. Boy, I thought these, gosh, these these engaged trains were going to go for a lot more than they're going for. Again, another thing that tanked. Um, gosh, trains used to go for a lot of money. Trains used to be like the honey hole. The the big ticket item, boy, I got trains this time. I'm going to make so much money. But, boy, it's just, it's it's not like that anymore. Um, so, not a whole lot of money being made here. Uh, half of six ninety nine, Made a little money on shipping. Not much. It went out first class because I'm not sent, I'm not going to lose that kind of money sending out priority. Your best to really try and send things out priority at this point in time, getting this close to the holidays with everything being so crazy with the post office. But I did first class. Put into a small box and it's out of here. Uh, another thing from the, um, the the guy that's moving away, he thinks he's moving away. He gave me some trains. These trains are selling for something. The guy bought this and this together. Didn't ask for combined shipping, so I just shipped them in one box and I copied and pasted the tracking number from the one box into the information for shipping for eBay. So he has that. So I did okay on that sale. So that is about it. Boy, that was a lot of items this week. I'm sure I spent a lot of time yakking away here. All right, let me, <laughs> let me get out of here so you guys can get your day back. Hey, don't forget to check out that eBay course. I just got the um, 
it is one dollar for some reason it's not working it's it's in the comments below it's a 97 dollars value and we're going to redo this course in the next couple months once this pandemic goes away i hope or gets better um so i'm going to redo that course but it is an evergreen course it's a couple years old evergreen meaning it is still valuable today there's still a lot of so great information we go from beginning to end of selling an, an item on eBay. Check out my eBay meetup group. That link is down there below. It's a Zoom meeting, so anyone can get on. You got a phone, you got a computer, you name it. And check out all the other podcasts and YouTube channels I've been on. All right, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Wear a mask if you got to. I want to get this thing done and out of the way. I've got some big things going on in January. doesn't look like they're going to happen if this thing is uh, happening. All right, my friends. Have a good day. I'll see you.